working with trauma is a very specialized field and doing neurofeedback with trauma requires expertise in both trauma and neurofeedback. TRF looks to bring that to clinicians. We have live virtual meetings that support the didactic self-paced training. You get equipment rentals when you sign up for the certification. We have practicum sessions that teach you how to use the equipment. There is a supplemental library that has lots of extra videos well beyond what's required as part of the didactic training. Lectures by experts, including Jay Gunkelman and Dr. Bessel Vanderkolk. Also as part of the training, there are supervised case study groups. Dr. Vanderkolk has long spoken about the importance of bringing neurofeedback in as a component when you're working with somebody with trauma. But one of the things in the field is that the regulation of people learning neurofeedback and their awareness of trauma is not always clear. So with the TRF certification, we know that we're bringing in people who are well-versed in trauma, and then we're teaching them how to use neurofeedback and teaching them how to incorporate that along with the clients that they're working with. One of the things that we know is that in developmental trauma, the brain can change. So there's the component of trauma and the component of resilience, but then there's also the component of what happens to the brain. So if we're not looking at what happens with the brain, we're missing a big piece of something that we need to be looking at. Neurofeedback allows us to look at the brain, look at the brain waves, the electrical activity, and to retrain it so that then the person can learn to modify their life, modify their approach to the events in their life. Developmental trauma directly can impact the brain as it is growing and forming, and that can last through a lifetime. When you introduce neurofeedback, you have the opportunity to change patterns in the brain so the brain can work more efficiently. Particularly during COVID, we've become more isolated, and that type of environment has stayed with us even though COVID has lightened up. So one of the ways the TRF has developed a sense of community that's absent from not being able to go to conferences like we used to, is to have an online community where providers that are learning about neurofeedback can reach each other and can discuss with each other how they're learning. We do that in the community meetings. We also do that behind the scenes where providers are able to meet with each other. Even if they're local to each other, they can possibly meet live. But that online community is very robust and very much a part of what helps you grow and develop as a neurofeedback provider. Learning neurofeedback can be a daunting task and one of the things that TRF does is breaks it down into components that lasts over five months. So instead of taking what was traditionally a four day course, now you were offered the didactic course plus community meetings where you meet over a period of months and then you finish up your training with the case study groups, which again meets over a period of a couple of months. So what you're doing is you're building your level of knowledge, but it doesn't end there because then you continue because now you're a member of the TRF community. So you have continued ongoing access to special meetings with experts in the field, and you can continue to join the community meetings so the learning never ends and TRF recognizes that and offers many, many opportunities for ongoing learning.